Today on Perpetual Projects, we're going to get the Fury running. So if you haven't, don't know about this project, this is our 1966 Fury that we bought to replace my 05 Magnum. And I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but that's down the road a little ways. For right now, we need to get this thing running because we had to take a road trip in the Jeep and and I'm sorry to all of you Jeep people, that is the most uncomfortable vehicle I've ever ridden in if you have to go more than 30 minutes away from your house. So this thing should be comfortable. We just need to make sure that it's dependable enough that if we have to go to Montgomery, like we did a couple days ago, that we can count on this thing to get us there and get us home. The first thing we have to do is get the old 318 in here running. Now, a little bit of uh, disclaimer, we've had this up on the lift and kind of went over it and looked it over and we've got a pile of parts that we ordered that I think is gonna be enough to get it running and probably not in this video, but a little bit further down the road, get it driving. Um, the reason it's not gonna probably be driving in this video is because I am anticipating a drive shaft problem. <laughs> and it's not really a problem. What it is, is it's a, uh, it's a mismatch. So this car would have originally been equipped with a poly 318 or a, an A block and a 727 transmission. It's currently equipped with a LA 318 and a 904 transmission. And while that would work together and work well, the 904 is a little bit shorter than the 727. So the drive shaft that's in the trunk, while it looks like it's pretty close to the right length, is probably gonna be about two to three inches short for this car. I have an option for a 727 to put in here, but I don't think it's gonna happen today. So for now, we're gonna get it running and then we're gonna start crossing off all the things on the list that isn't even on the windshield yet of things that we need to do to make this a running driving vehicle. Let's go over here and I'll take a look at what we, what we ordered for it. Okay. So we're kinda just gonna go from the top down <laughs> because that seems like a good way to do it because from the bottom up would be very hard. Speedometer cable. Now, I know that's not really needed to make it running and driving, but I'd like to have it. No kick down linkage in this car at all. And if, if you know anything about torque lights, gotta have it. So this is my new option, rather than trying to bend a linkage and, and make it work. These are super cheap on Amazon. I've had one on several vehicles now and they, they work great. In fact, this is what is on extra parts. We will throw a link in the description for this in the, the, the no. Yeah, yeah, a link in the description below for this. Uh, they're not very expensive. You get them on Amazon and I think they're awesome. If you, if you wanna spend more money, the low car ones are probably a little bit nicer, but this is just the, the knockoff version of that. We have motor mounts uh, because when we were under there, they don't look very good. And I'm hoping it looks like, and, and you guys probably know this, but I think the poly and the LA318 both take the same motor mounts. It sure looks like the exact same ones that are in there and I ordered these for this car. So hopefully they fit. We got all four wheel cylinders because I'm just guessing we're probably gonna need to do that. I don't know, they may be fine. Brake hoses, they're definitely no good. We got a carburetor kit because I don't have any idea how long the thing, this thing's been sitting. Yeah, unloading it off the trailer, it definitely doesn't have brakes right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then this is just a quarter inch pipe tap and I'll tell you more about that when we get to that portion here. And then I also got two exhaust flanges. These are just ball flanges. I guessed on the size, uh, cause I, this was kind of an afterthought. Um, this car has no exhaust. It's, it's open manifolds right now. So we're gonna need, if we're gonna drive it, we're gonna need some exhaust. And we're not getting super fancy because the 318 is kind of a short term plan for this. So just a couple of flanges and we'll go dig through the pile of exhaust pipe we have outside and see if we can make something. This is because I, I haven't found replacement window, like for the upper window channel. Um, and it has to have something in there because if you don't, the when you close the door, the window hits the stainless trim and, and I don't think the window would be long for this world closing the door like that. So we're just gonna, if we have to stick a little of this in there for now, eventually we'll fix it right, but I haven't actually found anywhere to buy the replacement window channel stuff yet. So if you guys know about that, let us know in the comments below because uh, it's a C body and they have them for A, B, 
and E bodies, but they don't really have a lot for C bodies. Um, I guess they're not as popular. And then here's the big one. <clears throat> so this is a replacement fuel tank for a 60, 64 to 65 B body. And I know this is a C body, but it looks like it's the exact same tank, maybe minus a couple of vents because the this had more vents than the other one. I, I don't really know, but I did find online somebody who has one of these tanks in one of these cars and this tank is 150 bucks the tank that is supposed to go in this car is 500 dollars. and if the only difference is a couple of hoses for a vent line i can deal with that so we're going to try this and we will let you know if it works because if you have a c body um and i think like all the way up into the 70s was the same fuel tank in these cars so we'll see if we can make this one work in this car and then you guys will have video evidence of whether or not you can put a charger, 64 to 65 charger fuel tank in a 66 to whatever Plymouth Fury. Okay guys, we're gonna start with the fuel tank. So as you can see, at some point, somebody was using a forklift to pick this Fury up and they, they missed the rear end by a foot and the fuel tank's not strong enough to lift the car. And well, we could probably fix some of this. There's a big hole here and it's honestly not worth messing with. We'll just put a new fuel tank in it. So there's our new fuel sending unit. Put the new gasket and lock ring. All right, if you guys come over here, <clears throat> we've got our fuel sending unit there and the one line that goes off and goes to the front. Then we've got two vent lines here, but this one is not hooked to anything. And this one goes up and goes into the trunk area. So we'll have to see what the deal there is. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and these two bolts here you can pull the back of the straps out and it's got a keyhole up there. So once you get it loose enough, you can pull that whole strap out and then it rotates down. And if we come back here, you can see they just fit into these grooves on the back and it's like a wide slot and it goes down and gets stuck in there. So we're gonna go ahead and get the bolts out and then drop this tank down. I'm just gonna cut those rubber hoses because I don't think they're any good anymore. So it uh, literally was this easy to get this tank strap loose. It, <laughs> I really expected to fight this. I don't even know if I needed tools, to be honest. I am speaking out of turn because I haven't done the other one yet, but... <laughs> Jinx. You too. It makes me wonder if somebody's had this fuel tank down at some point recently. No, I'm looking at the hoses, there's no way. Have I tried to get you to buy one of those before? Tool cart? Yeah, pretty sure. I'm like, ooh, that'd be useful. What can I say? <laughs> We have tool carts everywhere. <laughs> Some giant wheels on that tool cart. <laughs> That's an off-road tool cart. <laughs> I don't think it has any fuel in it at all. So the floor, it's rough, <laughs> but we knew that from the top side, the actual, let me get the, fl the flashlight again. So the, the cross members of the, the braces here, they're in good shape and they don't look like they're hardly rusty at all. This is just sheet metal. 
So it shouldn't be too hard to fix this floor. And I'll be honest, I've been watching uh, a channel called Make It Custom, and he does a lot of metal work. And I'm I want to try it. I want to. <laughs> that's like that's like my my thing that I want to like do. Or I, it's not my thing. I like it. Just looks like it'd be really interesting and fun. And I want to see if I can do it. So someday, not today. I want to see if I can make something that looks correct with all these bead rolls or uh, I don't know what you call those grooves, whatever, that fits in here and replace the trunk floor. They don't, I, I don't think they sell replacement trunk floors for these. And if they do, I guarantee I'm too cheap to buy them. But I think I can, I think, I think I can come close to making that or I can at least waste a bunch of metal trying. It said they were both 15 gallons. I don't know. I mean, that one's a little taller. But that's because this one's smashed. It, originally, it was taller. But it's not or smashed the on the edges. It's just smashed with a force wheel. I can flip it over quick. Like smashed. the... Oh, this side, yeah, yeah, that should be pretty close. Oh, ah! spiders. I'm out. Bye. <laughs> I think it's gonna work. Uh, yeah, I, I think mean, it'll why be fine. wouldn't it work? Well, so right now the the fear would be that we can't get the tank straps tight enough to hold it. Uh, tire, there's a tire there, Amber. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think I'm thinking that it's gonna be okay. So uh, I said, if it's thicker, then you should the strap should be plenty tight enough. Hopefully. But it's not as long, so it's going to be different. I, It'll I will, be fine. I will It'll just, be washed. We'll just try it. Uh, <coughs> and I'm going to go ahead and be confident enough that it's going to work, that I'm actually going to modify this tank. So I told you that this is going to someday be our daily driver replacement for the Magnum. And it's not going to do that with a 318 and a 904 transmission. But with a Hemi and an overdrive transmission, it definitely could. So knowing that I plan to hemi swap this in the future, I'm gonna go ahead and before I even put this tank in, I am going to bottom tap it probably here so that I can put a fuel line in the bottom for an external electric fuel pump. And the way I'm gonna do that is for right now, I was gonna go ahead and tap it for quarter inch, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. Um, I'm just gonna weld. No, I might tap it, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Anyway, I'm gonna weld a bung on the outside here, and I might actually put two of them on there just for in case, because uh, there's no fuel in it right now, so it's not a big deal to weld on it. But I'm gonna put those down here, and then what you can do, if we get ready to make this into fuel injected car and we need to bottom tap it, and I've done this before on diesels. So these are quarter inch, obviously, and we just have to figure out what size we actually need. You could take this fitting and solder a copper tube in here with the sock on the end of it so we can have an extended pickup that goes through that small hole. And then we can bottom tap the tank for an electric fuel pump so it's gravity fed to the fuel pump so that we don't burn up electric fuel pumps. So that's the, uh, that's the plan and that's the reason we're gonna go ahead and modify that tank now. So all I did is I cut a piece of 3 8 plate out on the drill press with a hole saw that gave me a bung. And then I drilled it and tapped it for quarter inch in the middle. And I made these a little bigger than I needed to for quarter inch because I'm not 100% sure quarter inch is going to be big enough when we get ready to, uh, I think it will be, but just in case it's not, I made these big enough so that if I have enough meat, I can go all the way out to half inch. So just in case. Now I tap this and when you, if you don't know this, when you tap pipe threads into something, It'll only go in on one side because the threads are tapered. So it screws in on this side, but this side, you'll never get that started. 
it's just too small so make sure when you're welding this on you weld it the right side out or you're never going to be able to get your fitting in there and you could tap this deeper maybe but just weld it the right way so ember really wants to show you guys this so i'm just going to go like that check out my weld bungs <laughs> so that's the second one i did i had a lot of trouble on the first one it's not going to leak but uh definitely not a good tig welder uh three eighths to I don't know, probably 20 gauge. I had a lot of trouble. As you can see, I had to chase it a little bit. And I know all the welders are cringing right now. That's okay because I'm not, and it's gonna work. But I'm really happy with how the bungs turned out. I really like how this one turned out. Um, and I thought I was trying to do the same thing on this one that I was doing on this one, which is focus the heat into the bung and just barely catch the edge of this as I was going around, but Somehow, well, actually, I know what happened. I, I, I wasn't paying close enough attention to how sharp my tungsten was, and I was getting a lot of arc spread, and I didn't catch it because it was down here where I was having a hard time seeing, which glasses and the magnifying glass in my, my helmet, I can really see what I'm doing, but I didn't catch that the arc was spraying into the tank, and it melted a piece off, so I had to carefully build this up and then just catch that edge it's not pretty uh i would not sell you this tank because it's not it's not that good uh but for me it's gonna be okay now we're gonna put this old broken rubber back in there again uh i have one on the way but i it was an oversight i thought i looked at it must have been that side was down and it looked good so i was gonna reuse it but it's not good so it's gonna go in there to hold it together we're just gonna put a couple of gallons of fuel in the bottom of this tank and it's easy to get this out once the tank is installed. So this is on the way. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and get the tank up in there. And then we'll put a sending unit in, run our fuel lines. And then, well, no, before we run our fuel lines, we're going to blow all the fuel lines out that are on the car. And hopefully don't find any holes in them because I don't have any replacement fuel line. But that's the next step. Get the tank in there. And Amber will probably do some B-roll or something as we're doing this. So... Since we're sitting here using this, this was sent to me by a subscriber. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, I've been looking at these and uh, Jeffrey, my buddy Jeffrey, he's a subscriber who sent it to me. He, <laughs> he called Amber Wednesday and said, I, apparently I didn't know about this, told her not to let me order one of these because uh, if you guys were there on Tuesday, we were just talking about how I really wanted to get one of these for the lift. And uh, anyway, so he uh, he sent this to me and it's awesome. In fact, I like it so much I'm gonna order another one. And because of that, I found the link. I'll throw the link in the description. This is, this is good. It hits a few of the points that I found that you really wanna hit with one of these jacks. One, this shaft is 34 inches long, so it comes clear down here. Uh, the, the manufacturer says 82 inches is the, the maximum lift. I don't think I would be that brave because I only leaves two inches in the jack down here, but easily you could go like 74 inches. That leaves 10 inches in the jack down here. I mean, depending on what you're picking up, I guess two inches is probably enough, but anyway, and it's got the thrust bearing here, so it spins really easy. I really like it. It's awesome. Like I said, we'll leave a link in the description. I'm ordering another one. So I took the filler neck out because <clears throat> I think we're going to have to put it in the tank and kind of torque it a little bit because it looks like the B body wants to go in like that, the C body wants to go in like that. I don't know if it's going to work or not yet, but this is nasty on the inside. So this is just the Eastwood brush that we bought. I don't know, we got them for working on the Jeep a long time ago and I have some left over. So I'm just going to try to clean this out like a pipe cleaner, only really big. As long as I can hold on to this piece. I just put it in your vise. Because if I put it in the vise, I'm going to smash it. Oh. <clears throat> hmm. Now we might have a problem. My plan was to go from both ends, but there's no way I'm going to get that brush, brush through there. So 
I guess I'll just keep. Here we go, a wire brush. What am I gonna do with a regular wire brush? Stick it in there and. What? I'll see you guys in two years. <laughs> okay, I found this one. It's the same thing, just really worn and used. But I don't know if you're gonna be able to see down in here. It uh, did a pretty good job in there. I mean, it's not perfect, but the loose stuff is off anyway. All right, so now we're gonna go see if we can get the tank in. Um, we're gonna have to modify the straps because where the bend is at, the tank is gonna end up loose in there. So what I'll do is I'll put a new bend in it, put another bend in it, drill a new hole, and just make the tank straps a little bit shorter to fit that smaller tank, which there's no way it's 15 gallons because it's not as wide, it's not as long, it's not as deep. So, but they're both 15 gallon tanks. I don't know, you do the math. Okay, so one thing at a time. We're gonna fix the fuel tank strap situation first and get the fuel tank solidly mounted so then we can work on getting the filler neck part figured out. And this is what you have to do when you use parts that aren't made for the vehicle you're working on. And I actually just looked again because I was, I, I was I'll, I'll admit I was ready to just order the right tank. They don't make a tank for a 66 Fury. So looks like no matter what I have to do, I have to modify it. Uh, they have one for a 67 and it's probably pretty similar, but I don't know that. It doesn't say that it fits a 66. Might be something simple, might be something major. But this is one of those the devil you know versus the devil you don't situations. And I knew I could make this one work. So what I did, obviously, if you come up here, you can see this strap is way too big. Uh, and in totally the wrong place. So what I did is I took it out. I've already done this one. I straightened out this end so that this bend wasn't here. And then I wrapped it around, got this angle here done, and then put a, just put a new hole in the end of it. And these, these here, they don't have any kind of reinforcement or anything on the end of them. It's just a hole drilled in it with a little punch mark and I kind of duplicated that. Not probably as well as Chrysler did because I don't have the tooling they had, but so that it's got a little bit ridge. It's more like a punch hole instead of a drilled hole and it has a little ridge around the edge. So that's what I did there. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one and then this will be mounted and then we'll work on our filler neck. Let me show you what I'm gonna do for that. Since we have the camera rolling here, this, this is what we're gonna do for that. It's, I mean, it's really, really, really close to the exact same size. So we'll cut this off. We'll figure out, I think I'm actually gonna have to shorten it a little bit because I'm adding metal in here. But that will make that go in and have the right angle to drop into that tank perfectly. Problem solved. I mean, challenge accepted. Can you still see the car shaking? So I just tested it. That fuel tank ain't going nowhere. And our fuel sending unit fits perfectly. The fuel, the fuel gauge wire even hooks right on there. So now we're gonna go ahead and work on our fuel lines. We need to get this fuel line, which I've looked it over. It looks like it's gonna be okay. But we need to get the other end, which if you come up here, somebody already broke the rubber, or the rubber hose already broke, or anyway, it's broke. So we can uh, just blow this fuel line out and see if we leak any air and if we get any nasty, crusty, which I'm, I'm sure we will, and if we, if we can even get air through it, I guess is a, a good place to start. And then we'll go from here up to the brand new fuel pump that somebody put on here, so that's nice. It's, uh, let me grab the light so you guys can see. It's already got a brand new fuel pump with the fuel filter, doesn't look like it's ever even had gas in it. So that's awesome. Um, and then this will be our line in from the tank. It looks like the front section of this has been replaced. Uh, I don't think it has, but it looks like it's in good enough shape. So we can just take this off here and blow that line back down that goes through the subframe down to here out. Put a short piece here to connect those two pieces, short piece in the back. And since there's no return on this vehicle, our fuel system is plumbed. Okay, we're gonna blow the fuel line out and Amber is gonna stand back here 
and suck <laughs> my ears. <laughs> She's gonna <clears throat> cover the outlet and catch anything that comes out of here so we can see glasses. how nasty it is. I'm gonna try not to wear too much carb cleaner because this is a little bit uphill, but not too much uphill. So let's see how this goes. I'm not sure if we got any in there or not. Okay, Amber, you ready? Hopefully. can't see if it got if there's anything on there <laughs> like my glasses are so dirty <laughs> oh some rust we'll do it a couple more times we're gonna have Amber put the camera hang it off the rear end or something so you guys can see but she needs both hands you get any carb cleaner out or just air it felt cold like it was carb yeah carb cleaner came out okay let's do it a couple more times did you get any carb cleaner? I got a lot of carb cleaner. Good. Is it rusty? Doesn't look like it. Good. All right, that line's all cleaned out. Now we just gotta do the one going from here to the fuel pump. And then we're gonna have to find some different line because this, this is 3 8 and that's 5 16 and that's not gonna work. Ooh. There's a blockage. We'll either get the blockage out or we'll explode this hose. And slimed. Mm, doesn't look too bad though. Alright, let's see it a couple more times. The the fluid that ran down my hand before it dried was kind of reddish, but it wasn't it wasn't on the towel. Hey look, it goes straight through now. It looks pretty clean. Okay, take it away. It looks pretty good. Did it get anything? I'm just touched to where it was touching, so not really. Not really. All right, so whatever was the blockage is gone, and so now we just got to hook up a couple of fuel hoses. And I'm going to have to use 3 8, three eight hose because that's all I have. And uh, just put regular hose clamps instead of those pinch clamps, which is probably better anyway. Okay, so we got our, we got our fuel line all done. Looks uh, factory. We're gonna see if we can figure this out. So here's here's my more research that I've I've done while I've been under here walking around. Definitely 904 transmission, 904 slip yoke. Thank you, Dad. He sent it to me. This yoke has a 7260 U joint. I have a 727 yoke with a 7260 U joint. The drive shaft that was in the trunk has a 7260 U joint on both ends. So that tells me that that drive shaft didn't go to this car. So now I'm hoping that that drive shaft will be the right length because, well, maybe it will be. I'm just hoping. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't it mismatch parts. And that's what happens when you buy a car that's kind of a little bit of a basket case. We also have this going on. So this is a, a converted to console bucket seat car. This is the shifter and this is supposed to be mounted on a bracket on the, bo the bottom of the transmission here. So we're going to have to make one of those. This is the shifter linkage out of whatever car the donor came out of. Um, and I'm leaning towards, I, I don't know, it's, it's an 86 something with the 318 and a 904. Uh, when I looked up the carb kit, it was listed under a like a New Yorker, a diplomat, or something like that. Um, I just assumed Dodge pickup because that's the most common 1986 V8 donor that I could think of. But I have no idea. The critical pieces that we're missing right now are 
this, which you can buy them, but I don't want to. I'm just gonna make one. I don't know this. Remember, this is just a temporary solution. That's why we're not spending a bunch of money on this because this, this engine transmission is definitely not staying in here. If I keep it carbureted and old school, it's definitely getting the big block. If I, what I really want to do is I, I want to combine the two or three Hemis that I have pieces of around here into one and put that in it. So we're going to make this bracket. We're going to figure out this linkage. We're going to get rid of all this partial linkage that's under here. We're also going to have to figure out that kick down cable kit that I bought and showed you because we have the bottom half of the kick down, but not the top half of the kick down. And like I said, I, this is the better one. It's got the pivot here. So that makes it a lot easier to make it work. I just don't feel like that's the best plan. Well, here's, there's more pieces of kick down here. Maybe, maybe we have a whole kick down. No, we might have a whole kick down that is made for this engine. We may not need that kick down kit. All right, I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna lay it out and look at it and see what we actually have because right now I'm just guessing and that's not doing anybody any good. So I'm under here unbolting or removing some of these linkages and stuff and I look up there how long do you suppose that piece of heater hose tied onto the EGR pipe is going to last if we got this car running? It's fine. So we're going to have to probably just pull that out and I'll bring it down here and I'll just crimp the end of it and weld it shut, put it back in. Here's the shifter rod that came with our car. Uh, it's not long enough, but now I think it's got the right angle so that it'll work. So this will go into the shifter and then this end will go on the rod but to make it longer I'm going to just take and cut it V it cut however much I need for length out of this random bolt I found laying around 5 16 bolt and then I'll just weld the two pieces together and I'll have a rod that's the right length but before we do that, we've got to do that bracket that holds the bottom of the shifter linkage. And this bushing fits perfectly. This bracket obviously won't work. This came off the front. This was for a column shift application. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this bushing out. We're going to bend the bracket out of this quarter inch. I know that seems overkill, but I, I have this or I have eighth. And I'm afraid eighth is just hanging out there. I mean, this one's pretty thin, but it has a support right next to the shift point. This one is going to be hanging almost six inches away from the tail shaft housing to get everything lined up. And I just feel like it'll be better to have it at a quarter inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out my length. I'm going to drill my two holes. I'm going to break it 90 here. That'll bring it down. And once we get ready, I'll get a light under there and show you guys under there. But it's dark under there, so you can't really see. So then it'll come down, it'll bend 90, and then once it's coming over, at the last minute I'll bend it up, and then the bushing will drop, or the shifter linkage will drop through there, through that bushing. I'm gonna get this cut out and bent up, and then we'll take it under there and see how it looks. Okay, I think that's gonna work. So that'll go right there like that. The bushing holds the end of our shifter linkage. I mean, it's still gonna have a little bit of slop. I don't have this bolted in yet, I'm just holding it there, but. I just got to pull it down, clean it up, paint it, and then we will let the car down, figure out where park is on the shifter, and then we'll make a, oh, really close to the camera, uh, and we'll make a uh, shifter linkage. There's a tire in my way. Okay, so we measured our drive shaft and it's gonna be close. So this, you know how some yokes have a lot that doesn't, that's not splined. This one has about a, about three eighths of an inch or half an inch here that's not splined. And the seal's gonna ride somewhere in the middle of this. That's gonna give us a full inch and a half of splines engaged. Um, the rear end's at full droop right now, so it's only gonna get better as the rear end goes up. Uh, this is probably not the right length drive shaft, but I think it's going to be close enough for application. We're going to put it in there just so we have a drive shaft in it so we can try to move it if we can get it running. Like I said, it's pretty close. So that housing was four and a half inches long. And right now from the seal 
we have about two inches and then the tail shaft actually sticks out about a eighth of an inch or so beyond the seal. So we have a good inch and a half of thread engagement in there. Um, probably not right, but we're gonna run it and see what happens. I mean, it's not like this is a really high horsepower engine. It's a 86-318 with a two barrel. It's probably gonna be lucky to have 125 horse, so. Okay, so what we have is we cut our linkage off and then I just kind of ground the edge of this so I got a nice place for a weld. Can you see that? And then now we're gonna take this magnet and just use it to try to line this up. It's not gonna work perfectly. Something like that. I'll have to hold that and then I just need to get a tack on it. I'm just gonna tack this one and then I'll put this one on there and tack it. And then we'll test it in the car and see if it works. Magnet's not gonna work, so we're gonna try something different here. I'm just gonna use the the vise not open far enough for this to fit down in there to hold it <clears throat> kind of even while I put a tack on it. Probably about to really regret not getting my gloves. I think that's gonna work. Let's see. I think that'll work good. Might have to bend this bend a little bit once we get it welded, just to flatten that out a little bit, but I think it's gonna be good. I'm getting anxious. Uh, I want to hear this thing run. Drive shafts in. Shifters hooked up. I aired the tire up. I don't think there's anything else under here that's going to matter if it's hooked up for right now. We're just going to fire it up and maybe put it in gear, see if it moves forward and back. Um, Got to check the coolant uh, or put coolant in it because it's low. It doesn't have any. But before we put it down, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over uh, by hand. I've turned it over a little bit, like just like grabbing a hold of it as we were walking around, but I haven't turned it completely over. So it does turn over. I just want to make sure it turns all the way over. It has compression. I mean, for an 86, 318. All right. I figured it was going to turn over, but I figured we'd check it before we let it down just to make sure we didn't have any problems. <clears throat> now we're going to let it down. Uh, I think we're going to dump some gas in it and hit the key and see what happens. We have a hole. Oh shit. So, that's enough coolant. Time to see if it runs, because if it doesn't run, then it needs to go outside and we need to build a Hemi. If it runs, we'll order a radiator um, or find a radiator, figure something out, uh, address a few other things, order some stuff to build some exhaust, figure out the, the fuel filler thing in the back because it's not gonna work the way it's currently uh, lining up. The, uh, the, the angle is wrong and the trunk floor is in the way and it's it's more than I want to deal with right now. Right now I want to hear this thing run. 
Um, I, I know we were doing a lot more than we needed to to make it run, but we were we were motivated and we were excited to work on it. And now we just want to hear it run so we can stay motivated and excited to work on it. We're gonna stick a battery in it and some fuel and see what happens. So the great thing about a marine battery is not only will it do stud type batteries and top post batteries, you can always also put side post batteries on battery terminals on it. See, just like that. Obviously gonna have to uh, do something different with the battery cables on this car because I'm not putting a side post battery in it. Okay, uh, we, we thought about it and decided that we didn't want to uh, dump fuel in that tank until we're done messing with it because we're gonna take it back out and well, we don't wanna have fuel in it. So we're just gonna do this. All right, Amber, you get in. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Hit the key, see what happens. Oh, you tried to start it? Okay. So it turns over, so we're gonna put some gas in here and see what happens. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Do I hold it through when I start doing that? The cranking? Yeah. No. Okay. If it starts, let off the key, just like normal. <laughs> All right, it's picking up fuel. Okay, try it again. Give it a little gas. Thanks so much. It's got, it sounds like it's missing. It's just, it's just not worth fixing. I mean, look at it. 
the the tanks are broke it's not original to the car as somebody pointed out in the last video this should have the round top radiator which we're not ordering one of those we're probably going to order a cheap aluminum radiator but because it's cheaper and this 318 is it's going to be a ball of fire but it's not going to put out much heat <laughs> um yeah i mean it, it runs good it starts good it doesn't run good. It sounds terrible, but we probably need to rebuild the carburetor. I imagine we probably, I mean, it has nice wires on it, but it probably needs a tune-up. Who knows? Uh, maybe we need to uh, do the old seafoam down the carburetor and see if we can clean it up that way. I, I, I don't know yet. What I do know is that uh, now that we know it runs, it's worth spending a little more money on. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to get some parts coming. We need to get some tires put on it. We need to get the shifting thing figured out because obviously that's not working the way it's supposed to work because we couldn't find reverse. Uh, we did find forward and it goes, it, it, it's gonna go forward, but that's not gonna get us out of the garage. So we're gonna work on that. Uh, there will be more videos. If you're interested in this project and you wanna see where we take it, subscribe, turn your notifications on and you'll get notified every time we put a video out. And there will be more videos on this car for sure. And if you don't mind, a, a like, is awesome. See you soon.